How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Now if you've been around for a while you would have heard about the Oppo Find N2 which is a nice foldable device, in fact probably one of the perfect aspect ratio, perfect size when it comes to foldable devices and oddly it increases on it. So now here we are, fast forward, we have the Find N2 Flip and if you've been using the or be seeing the Samsung Z Flip 4, this is probably the biggest competitor for it because this actually is a lovely device. And I've been using it for a while and it just, man, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. But without further ado, let's get into it, see what you get in the box. And we we'll talk about the performance, the camera and all that kind of stuff. In true Oppo fashion, the packaging looks very familiar. In the box, opening it up, we get the phone itself. And then underneath that, we get our charge cable. The charge cable is long enough as well, so you don't have to sit so close to your uh, outlet. And we also get a 67 watt charging brick in here, which is kind of strange because the device itself won't do more than 44 watt uh, of fast charging, but uh, it's in there if you ever need to do so. Then we have a plastic case, we'll come back to that. Then we have a SIM ejector tool, which is nicely tucked away in there. So get that out to get your SIM card in your smartphone. And then you have a quick start guide and safety guide information. So keep that safe in case you need to refer back to it. And we also get a USB-A to USB-C adapter, which is useful for transferring data from an old legacy device or whatever. Taking a closer look at the device itself, it's very slick. It's such a nice device. This is the violet color, which is like a sort of purpley uh, color, like lilac sort of purple color, which looks really nice. I really like this color. It's not in your face. It's just nice and subtle. Going back to that case, when you pop the plastic case on, it looks really nice too. The plastic case is very tough. It just keeps your device nice and secure and uh, just keeps it nice and pristine if you wanna keep it for a long period of time. But around the device itself, on the right side, we get our volume rocker and a power button. The power button also doubles up as your fingerprint reader to log into the device or unlock the device. And then on the bottom of the device, we get a USB-C port, your SIM card tray is there. You've got speaker grill and microphone also uh, located at the bottom. We look on the left side of the device, there's nothing there, just it's nice and flush. You've got your antenna band, just showing it on there. And up top, we have microphone and what seems like an infrared blaster, but I'm not completely sure, but there's a whole tiny hole there, which I'm not sure what that is. We look on the back of the device, we have a dual camera setup, a standard wide and an ultra wide angle lens. We'll talk more about the camera uh, further down the line. But what's really cool here is that big cover screen. This cover screen is probably the biggest I've seen on a flip phone bigger than the Z Flip 4, bigger than the Motorola Razr. That's probably the most disappointing part of this as much as it's also a really nice addition to this. We'll talk about that as we go down the, the video as well. On the front, we have a front facing camera situated right at the top. We have stereo speaker set up. This supports fingerprint sensor and face unlock as well for security. Uh, so you can quickly log into the device using your face or fingerprint. The Find N2 Flip is actually pretty lightweight as well. Nice and just nimble in the hand and it just feels nice to hold. This weighs uh, just around 191 grams, very lightweight. And what I also love about this is the way the hinge just sits nice and flush, so you don't really see it much at all. When compared to the competitors like the Z Flip uh, 4 and the Motorola Razr, the latest one, so the 2022 version, you can tell the way they all are in terms of sizes. They're very similar uh, in sizes, but thickness is where they differ and that hinge design. On the Oppo, it just sits nice and flush. There's barely any hinge that you can see on there, which is incredible. And then when you fold it as well, you can barely see anything in comparison to the other flip phones out there. In terms of size, we have a 6.8 inch uh, in terms of the screen size. Uh, this is 1080 by 2520 pixels. And then the cover display itself is AMOLED. It's, it's finished in Corning Gorilla Glass 5 and this is 3.26 inch. And uh, this will give you around 250 PPI for the outer display and it's 382 by 720 pixels. The inner screen will give you 1,600 nit, uh, nits peak brightness, if I can say that correctly. And the one inside will give you 900, the one outside, so the cover display, sorry, will give you 900 nits uh, peak brightness, which is super good. Unlocking the device and once you've set up your device, this is running on MediaTek processor. So this has a MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus series, which is four nanometers. It's got octa-core processor and uh, you have a Mali G710 GPU in there as well. In terms of memory and storage, you have eight gigabytes of RAM minimum and 256 gigabytes of uh, storage. You can go all the way up to 512 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM and UFS 3.1. That camera on the back, more on that, it's a 50 megapixel 1.8 uh, aperture. 23 millimeters wide, it's got PDAF as well. And you have that disappointing eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, which is F2.2. 
This is capable of shooting 4K at 30 and 60 frames per second. You can also shoot uh, 1080 at 30, 60 and 240 frames per second. On the front is a 32 megapixel f2.4 aperture front facing camera and that is 22 millimeters uh, wide with autofocus. This can shoot 1080p at up to 30 frames per second. Just general use of the device, it's very slick. It's just very fluid, very smooth. I have no issues with it at all. In fact, running some scores here in terms of benchmarking, we've got a Geekbench, it's got 659 single core and 2875 multi score, which Motor score for me is where it really matters because you're going to be running multiple applications. It's running Android 13, it's got ColorOS on there, and it's ColorOS 13 as well. When compared in terms of performance on the Geekbench score with the Z Flip 4, you're looking at 667 on the Samsung versus 659 on single core on the new Oppo uh, Find N2 Flip. And the motor score is very higher on the Oppo, you're looking at 2,875 versus 2,364 on the Samsung. And the Samsung is running obviously with the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. So this is pretty good in terms of score and performance. Uh, but what that feels like in real life, that's a totally different story. It actually feels very fluid. It doesn't matter what the score is. It just works really well. Running multiple applications, no problems there at all. Playing games, absolutely fluid as well. So you load up Call of Duty and it just works really well. Uh, we can run, uh, we run 3D Mark uh, score as well. And this scores very well. So best loop looking at 2,622 and lowest loop 1,269. Compare that to uh, our Z Flip 4 again. Uh, we've got my resorts on here looking at 2841 on best loop score and lowest 1390. So it's very similar in performance. So this is a flagship level of performance that you can expect on here. Running through the settings to see what you get here. So we go through things like your uh, foldable features, which means you can control what's on the cover display. So you can change the widgets. You can change the cover screen style as well. So you got wallpapers available. You can put your own photo on there as well. You got widgets, like I say, so you can switch the widgets around. So you got camera, events, weather, and so on. Unfortunately, at the moment, you can't add any other widgets apart from what's already here, which is a shame. And another thing about the cover display is it's quite limited to what's on there. So you can't play games on it, for example. I know you don't want to play games on it, but you'll be able to play games on it. You won't be able to watch, say, YouTube on it. There are third-party apps that you can download to do that. But obviously, I wouldn't advise because it's not made by Oppo directly to actually put on there. There's a, there's a third-party app that works on Xiaomi phones, uh, which could work on here if you can get hold of the app. But for a default thing out of the box, all the display can do on the outside is show you camera so you can take photos for example you can have a look at your event weather timer and so on and then we have quick reply on there and so on uh, scrolling down wallpaper style you've got loads of wallpaper options available and styling of the device in general which is good and then we go on display and brightness uh, this is very bright um, and you also got eye comfort which is good you can change uh, you can have image sharpener and video color and answer. So if you use Oppo before, you'll be familiar with this color OS features. Uh, but what's also cool is your screen refresh rate. So this will support 120 hertz refresh, or you can dial it down to 60 hertz. I've been running on maximum and battery life is still good in it. The battery is 4,300 milliamp hour battery. But even with that, this is power, it's battery life is top notch. And when I say that, it means the battery will last you the whole day and then some. So you don't have to worry about keep charging it. But if you do need to charge it, you can use that 67 watt brick to charge the 44 uh, fast speed that's actually available on the Flip uh, to uh, Find N2 uh, Flip. In sound settings, we have things like Dolby Atmos. So you can change uh, profile for different scenarios like music, movie, or you can have it smart, say smartly or intelligently. We'll select what's actually uh, important for what you're watching. And if you go back out, you can change uh, aptics as well. So aptics and tones, so you can change the intensity of it, of your vibrator motor. It feels really solid on here again, feeling very premium, which is what I really love about this smartphone. Even with a small display, if you go in your special features uh, settings, you can adjust things like split uh, screen, have a gesture for that, flexible window. So you can run two devices, uh, two applications side by side on here, even on this screen here, which is pretty cool. Moving to camera, we have Asselblad uh, colors on here, which is cool. Something that we've seen before on our Oppo and OnePlus devices. And the colors look really good when you ta start taking pictures on here. Uh, one thing that's really cool is, even though that front facing camera is absolutely pants, when taking photos, what you can do is flip it down, uh, select this little button here on the corner, and that would allow you to use the actual front cover for taking photos as well. So you can use that main camera uh, sensor that we have here and use that as a uh, camera, which means you get better quality uh, for photos when taking photos on the go. Apart from that, you can shoot IRS photos as well. So you can select that in settings, you got HDR, and if you go into more settings, you can see things like watermark and shooting methods and so on. So for example, you can do gestures, 
uh, to take photos by just raising your hand, something Samsung does as well. Got ultra wide angle settings and two times uh, optical zoom as well, which works really well. You also have portrait mode, you have night photography, uh, video mode, and if you go into more, you have access to the Asobad uh, Pro settings. So if you go into that area, you'll be able to adjust things like your ISO, shutter speed, and so on. You can also select if you want to shoot RAW or RAW Plus, uh, which means bigger file sizes as well, so bear that in mind. And then in video, you can select to shoot uh, different resolutions, 720p, 1080, and 4K. And if you select that tiny little button there, you can select uh, the frame rate you want at 30 or 60 frames per second. So the options are there to shoot some, some sort of slow-mo or just standard 30 frames if you wish to do so. Before we go into performance and graphics and stuff like that, let's look at some of the photos that was taken on the Find N2 Flip and some of the videos as well. In portrait mode, that picture looks really good. It does a good work at separating the hair and the, and the jacket and all that kind of stuff. So things looks really good. If we then use the two times, uh, two times portrait mode, again, things looks fantastic. Skin tone looks great. The Asselblad is shining through and you can tell the blurry background looks good as well. The separation is great as well. So there's a lot going for this thing, which in fact, I really love the camera performance on this. Uh, it works really well. When shooting videos as well, colors pop, things looks really good and bright and uh, stabilization is good as well, which I'm quite impressed with. Low light photography is good as well, as you can see here, we see the traffic light that shot. The highlights are great, the color reproduction is good as well, and I just love the night photography performance. It's not all good news though for the camera, I know I'll say that I love it so much, but the ultra wide angle camera is just absolutely awful, especially night photography on the uh, ultra wide angle camera. As you can see there, things are just overblown, it's just not something that I'd want to share on social media. Selfie cameras, not the best either, especially in low light. So when you start trying to take portrait photos or just standard photos using that selfie camera, it just doesn't look good. It looks washed out, it's just overblown. Although it uses a screen as flash, it's still not the best. Uh, so the best way to get photos out of this a selfie is to use the main camera because you can flip it and still get good photos through that. In video as well, focusing is very good. So when you're switching from this tree here, as you can see on the screen, uh, flips over to the car. It does a really good job at breathing, the focus breathing from the tree to the car. Just a, it does a nice transition and the car looks, colors look great. The grass looks very green. The darks, the dynamic range on the car looks very good as well. So this is sort of performance I expect from a flagship level of a smartphone. And this does exactly that, which is amazing. Elsewhere, just on a normal day, just shooting around London today, it just looks fantastic as well. The sunset, the colors just looks really nice. Look at the sky, even when shooting ultra wide angle in good lighting, it still brings out some really good colors as well. Ultra wide angle just in low light is just a no, but other than that, I think it does a good job at getting some nice shots as well. The sunset just looks fantastic. Look at that. You can see the sun just popping behind the buildings. It does really well with the silhouettes and the darks and the contrast there, the water, and then raw formats, you can edit it afterwards as well, which is good. So I think overall the camera performance is really good. Um, I think it does a good job at reproducing colors and. Uh, portrait mode looks good as well, so I can't fault the camera there apart from that selfie camera, I think that needs to work. And the ultra wide angle as well, especially low light, needs some work. When it comes to the display quality as well, I love what they've done in terms of uh, the, the screen quality looks really good, playing 4K videos on YouTube for example, things look really good, the, color looks, the colors look great, the speaker sounds good as well, so I think overall display quality is definitely, definitely a good one. It's up there uh, with some of the best displays on a smartphone, especially on a flip phone, that's impressive. Uh, we look at gaming, so now into the processor performance, chucking Call of Duty on there, things looks really smooth, there's no problems there at all, you've got that 120 hertz refresh rate on there, even though you won't be getting 120 frames per second, if I can get my words out, it still works really well, you're getting a really good uh, fluid performance, moving around the screen and shooting away, that kind of stuff, looks really good, so I can't fault it there. I think overall, it's a really good smartphone, it's a smartphone that I definitely recommend, I love the way that it's nicely packaged in terms of how slim it is. Even when it's folded, when it's unfolded, there's barely any creases as well. So even when it's off or on, you can't really notice that crease and the hinge design just looks really good. I think they've done a great job with the Find N2 Flip. Now, if there's anything, I wish the cover display had a bit more uh, function to it, functionality. So it's not just there to view a few things um, in terms of just viewing uh, your calendar or camera or that kind of stuff, just swiping across, checking what's on today and the weather. I wish you're able to do more like, you know, play with some apps and quickly message on there, all that kind of stuff I'd love to really do on there. But other than that, this is one of the biggest displays on the cover display and it works really well and it looks really good. So Oppo, work on doing more with this. I feel like you could do more with that display for sure. But other than that, great performance, great camera, great battery, 
great display, great design. I think it's great all round. This might be my new favorite flip phone right now besides the, the its big brother. Uh, so this is a really good device. But over to you, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, uh, drop them there as well. I'll do my best to answer those questions. Uh, but in the meantime, please do subscribe if you're new around here. Uh, smash the bell notification as well so you get notified every time I upload a new video like this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.